today that flows through our musicians, Sam and Karen, through our soloist, Adam, and through Dean, who leads our chants. And I know that the perfect message of the divine is spoken this morning through Dr. Mark, that his message is the message we have all come to hear to awaken to the truth of our divine nature, to experience it more fully, to share it more fully in the world. And so I give thanks right here, right now, for all the blessings I know that we receive in this time together. Knowing it is all of God, I say, thank you, God, and I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, amen. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is all that I am. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is all that I am. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life and God is all that I have. So now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And so now, let's join in our congregational song, What a Wonderful World. Oh, no. 
wonderful world And I think to myself What a wonderful world Okay so now we're going to give ourselves the gift of meditating for five minutes. So I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are, to just make sure you're seated upright, but in a comfortable position, to close your eyes, turn your attention inward. And for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that mantra and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
just changed. Nothing stays the same. Everything must change. Nothing and no one goes on. Change the young becomes the old, and mysteries do unfold for that the way of time. from the clouds sunlights of the sky and hummingbirds do fly winter turns to spring Awesome. Good to have you here. Well, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Welcome to Virtual Church. Here we go. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this idea of security. And as I've thought about this this week, the thing that really emerged for me is this idea that I teach again and again, the idea of the universal doubt. 
And that idea of universal doubt basically comes down to this. It's a belief in lack. It's a belief in not enoughness. There is not enough for me. Um, there is not enough for others. There's not enough in the world, whether it's money or time or opportunity or love. It's that big, big belief in not enough. And I think this is um, very much connected to our belief, to our idea of security. Um, so, you know, in the Old Testament in the Bible, one of my favorite stories as a kid growing up was Daniel in the lion's den. So Daniel gets to spend an evening in the lion's den, which of course was fascinating to me as a kid because what little boy doesn't love lions? Oh my God, lions are great. You know, and Daniel's going to spend a night in the den with all the lions. And the amazing thing is that come morning, Daniel is absolutely fine. The lions never opened their mouth. So what happens there? How was Daniel to go into the lion's den with such security that he knew that he was safe? So first of all, what Daniel did was Daniel humbled himself in the presence of the universal mind. In the presence of God, Daniel humbles himself, thereby opening his understanding and, and, and what that did was that made him receptive to a more cosmic consciousness. See, I think we have to have courage to enter fearlessly into whatever it is that's before us. So in Daniel's case, it was the lion's den. For us, it's uh, entering into the overcoming life. For us to enter into the consciousness where we overcome all of the different things that life presents us with. But courage alone will not do it. Right? We have to have, uh, as Daniel does, Daniel has a reverence for spiritual things. And a devotional attitude is absolutely necessary in order to receive the spiritual inspiration that feeds him all night long in the lion's den so he is safe. See, his tank, his mind, his heart, his being is filled with spiritual inspiration because of his belief in God, because he trusts God. So, you know, I think if we really, really trusted God, we would not have any problem with this idea of security. We would know we are secure, we are safe, we are provided for, our needs are met, always, always, always. I remember years ago reading a story about Ernest Holmes, who was the founder of our church, and it was a story about his prosperity consciousness. And my understanding was Ernest Holmes had a really fantastic prosperity consciousness. He lived quite an abundant life. But when asked about it, he said that rather than be a person who had, you know, all the money he wanted and had to worry about dragging that money around with him here and there, he would rather be the person who knew, the person who knew, the person who had the consciousness that wherever they were in life, they knew that their needs were being met. And I think now that's something to aspire to. Because, you know, we don't want to have to carry everything we have in the bank or everything that's in our, um, you know, our treasure chest, whatever that may be. We don't want to carry that with us all the time. A better thing to carry with us would be the consciousness that we live our life in this consciousness where I know that all of my needs are met. I trust in the inherent goodness of God, the inherent goodness of life. This is what Daniel's doing in the lion's den all night as he communes with that spirit of the living God that is within him. And in the morning, he is absolutely fine. There was no question in his mind about his security. I think, wow, would I like to have that sense of security, and I bet you would too, as we maneuver through the events and circumstances of our life. You know, a lot of people, and it could be the year that we had, the 13 months that we have just lived through, uh, it could be a lot of people have this, uh, it seems to me, a lot of people have this sense of an impending doom or disaster. You know, that they have no peace of mind. I can't tell you how many people tell me they do not sleep at night. And they think, oh, I don't sleep at night. Call me anytime. We'll talk, you know. <laughs> and what people do, you know, when they're not sleeping is they worry, worry, worry. Now, I'm sure none of you, but perhaps people we know very intimately, worry a lot. Now, what do we say about worry here? Worry is a problem prayer. When you're worrying, you are actually praying the problem. So if you say, oh, I'm so worried about my, I'm so worried about my son. I'm so worried about my daughter. I'm so worried about this. Think about this. All thought creates form at some level, and your worry is creating form at a level that you do not want to be creating at, right? So we have to sort of really take ourselves by the, you know, the scruff of the neck and say, okay, this is what we have to do. I, you know, it, 
Our physical needs, yes, absolutely must be met. You know, we have to have food and clothes and housing and stuff like that. But what about our emotional needs? What about our mental needs? What about our spiritual needs? We have to put as much effort into those, I believe, as we do into the food and, and clothing and housing. Um, for a lot of people, I realize this sense of feeling insecure has probably come from childhood, right? From frustrations, uh, maybe we felt not wanted or not needed or not loved. Uh, um, you know, all children have to feel like they are a part of the family, like they have to have a sense of belonging. If we don't, if we don't feel that, I think we're going to feel insecure. We're going to feel rejected. We're going to feel adrift. We're going to feel not connected, not really tethered in. And if we feel inferior, there is no, um, there's no joy in living, is there? There's no hope. There's no enthusiasm, right? So we start to think, oh, everybody's against me. The odds are against me. Life is against me. Things never work out for me. Those thoughts and emotions, I am here to tell you, if you think those things again and again and again, those are going to affect your body. Those are going to take root in your physical body temple. Now, if if we feel inferior, you know, no good can come out of that. It, it, wherever it came from, whatever people said or did to you along the way, no good can possibly come from that. And I am here to tell you that God does not look at you in any way and see you as less than. God looks at you and sees you as a place where God's fullness, where God's allness, where God's joy and love and creativity all come forward through us into the world. So if you th have a belief that you are somehow inferior, that is wrong-minded thinking. Now, the other side of that coin is some people think that they are superior. They think that they're better. You know, that is also wrong-minded thinking. What is truth is that we are all cells in the body of God. We all express a unique aspect of the divine, right? We're all part of life. So therefore, because we are part of life, we are not now or ever rejected by it. Today is the day, I think, that we should change our attitude. Today is the perfect day to change our thinking. Today is the, the perfect day to cease any confusion we have about ourselves or our place in the world or our relationship with God. We can establish a new life-affirming pattern, right? A spiritual pattern that is a, a new life-affirming pattern that is spiritual, a new life-affirming pattern mentally, emotionally, and physically. See, we're greater. Who we are as a spiritual being, the spirit, the consciousness that you and I are, is so much greater than any of our individual thoughts. The, uh, who we are as a being, as a spiritual being, as an incarnation of God, is so much greater than any of the challenges we face. And I know people face really big challenges. So I'm not minimizing that. But here's the thing. We, each of us, we are the thinker that thinks the thought that makes the thing. So when you know that, when you know, oh my gosh, this has to do with my thinking. And it's not just it's saying it has to do with my thinking. It seems like an oversimplification to me. It has to do with my consciousness, with my believing, my way of being, the level of faith and trust I have in the universe, how I speak about myself, how I speak about other people, how I speak and think about life. All of this is how we help to create an experience. So yes, in the science of mind teaching, we are interested in spiritual laws. This is what Ernest Holmes studied. He studied the spiritual laws that he felt that were operating everywhere in the universe and were available to all of us. So how can I live in alignment with the spiritual laws to produce a better experience of life for myself and for those I love? Well, first of all, we have to know that we are living in a spiritual universe right now. And Jesus said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. At hand means it's here now, right? Isn't that what at hand means? It's here, like it's available, it's present, it's now. It's not down the road, it's not later, it's not next week. The kingdom of God is at hand. So at hand means we don't have to wait. And if you let it, the kingdom of God, that presence of the living spirit that's everywhere and within us, Will, will dominate, will lead us, will guide us, will essentially control everything else in a harmonious, happy, loving, abundant way.
See, we don't do better. Uh, I look back at life, and I think, you know, we all have areas where we say, oh, I wish I'd done better here. I wish I'd done better there. I understand. Absolutely. I got a big list of those myself. But we didn't do better because we didn't know better or we weren't actually capable in that instance or moment of doing any better. So we look for a security where, uh, not out here, but in spirit, in our relationship with God. Because the truth is, we've looked everywhere else, haven't we? I mean, I certainly have. I've looked everywhere else for security. You know, whether it be with uh, around work, or money, or stock market, or spouse, or this, or that, all these other things. We've looked everywhere else. But see, our relationship with God is where security comes from. That's it right there. Having a relationship, an ongoing personal relationship with the indwelling spirit is where our sense of security, our sense of belonging, our sense of peace and safety, that's where all of that comes from in life. Our relationship with the principal power and presence of God within. You know, we all understand if we try to place our security in external things, external people, external circumstances, we will fail. And I suspect we've all done it. I certainly have again and again and again. You know? We fail. And what I mean by fail is that in that externals, everything outside of us is an effect. And effects are always changing. Effects are not cause. Effects are effects. They are the result, right? So our security is not in the changing but our security can be found in the changeless, in the eternal. We can't really be happy in life unless we have some sense of security. And for everyone, that level of security is different. But what I've come to understand in my study of the science of mind is how we get to this place is that movement from what I call kingdom one consciousness to kingdom two, where we have been feeling like a victim and we start to rise up and feel a little more empowered, and we start to move into a consciousness where my life is about co-creating my experience with God. So we go from victim to being a co-creator with God. Now that's a huge passage. That's a huge step in our spiritual life, but I think we absolutely have to do that because as we move into that second kingdom where we are a co-creator, several things happen. We're building faith. We're increasing in trust. We're expanding our belief. And so with faith, trust, and belief, then our security is based on a strong spiritual foundation. Right? Um, individuals who are carrying a lot of fear, um, a lot of doubt, uh, a lot of anger, hatred, malice, negativity, they're not going to find the peace that they say they desire. Right? They won't have that sense of inner security. See, because we have to know, regardless of present conditions, that who I am and who you are as a being is we are whole. We are whole because God made us that way. We have to know this regardless. I will not feel whole unless I'm rooted in God. My wholeness cannot be based on things that are outside of me or separate or apart from me. My life, like your life, is rooted in the divine spirit. And when enough people live as though God is living through them, everybody is only going to wish for the good of other people. Nobody would, it, we would never even entertain the thought of something that could be possibly detrimental to another brother or sister on the face of the planet. And we think, oh, well, that's a really high order. I don't know that that could possibly happen. Yes, absolutely it could if our life is rooted in the divine spirit. Again, when enough people live as though God is living through us. So maybe that's a question we could ask ourselves today. How would I really be in life if I knew every day that God was living through me, that God was expressing through me, that God was loving through me, that God was just participating in life by means of me? See, as I affirm my wholeness, I know wholeness is present in all other people. And that's a wonderful thing. So not only do I feel good because I'm affirming my wholeness, but I'm doing something that I know is benefiting. It's lifting the vibration, the frequency of the planet. And other people get raised up. I affirm that all of my needs are divinely met. And the abundant life is present in all people. As I realize my oneness with God, with pure spirit, the unity with God is present in every man, woman, and child. It's there, at least as a potential within us. 
I think we were mistaken if we thought security was to be found out here. It's an inside job. So Ernest Holmes, our founder, said this, God is available to all of us, but we must give up our limiting ideas and cultivate an awareness of the presence within if we are to experience the fullness of God. So that's our job, to cultivate an awareness of the presence, of in, uh, presence within. Ernest goes on in his writings, he says, there is an instinctive divine urge within everyone to know more, to be more, and to express more. Isn't that great? That, that something within us that wants to be and express more is divine. It's of God. It's, it's spirit seeking a fuller expression of itself. And he goes on to say, and I have found that the thing we are searching for is the thing we are searching with. So why don't we do that now together? Let's take a few minutes in our practice together this morning and cultivate an awareness of the presence within. So I invite you now to just breathe in the love of God. Take a deep breath with me and let the love of God, God's goodness, fill every cell of your body and exhale anything unlike that. Any fear, any doubt, negativity, exhale it. Give it away. Let it go. Be done with it. Inhale the love of God. Just drink it into every cell. Let it fill every atom of your being. God's perfect loving presence is right here, right where I am. And we exhale everything unlike it. Just let it go. And so as we come together in consciousness now, becoming still and aware that we are one with God, that God that is everywhere is right where we are. And I know that our oneness with God is the most true, real thing about us, that we are emanations of the Most High. It's in this awareness that I speak the word for each and every one of us today, and I claim for us a divine security. We know that we have place in the mind of God, each and every one of us. We belong. And that all of our needs, now and always, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, they are met. Nothing is withheld. There is no withholding in divine consciousness. So I claim for each and every one of us wholeness and peace and security. I know this is absolutely the will of God, like Daniel in the lion's den. When we're faced with discord, when we're faced with a challenge, we focus on our relationship with God. We think about God instead. And I know that as a result of that, everything that needs to take place unfolds in a harmonious way, and our life is good because God is good all the time. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of our loved ones, whether they're here with us on this plane or not. And we know that right where they are, God is present, that they are surrounded, filled, upheld, and loved by that spirit of the living God. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So, whatever has pulled at your attention in this past week, whatever has been unsettling, whatever you think could use prayer in the world, bring that into your awareness right now. And with an open mind and an open heart, excluding no one, we let the love within us, which is God, emanate out from us to touch all people on the face of the earth. And if you are someone who is in need of prayer today, I just invite you to be open and feel the love of pure spirit filling your being, healing, renewing, cleansing, making you whole in every way. I know this is the truth. So we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques, ashrams, all, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together that we are all God's perfect expressions. And for this and so much more, I give thanks. I release this word into God's perfect law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. 
All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Ah, 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 ah. 
Adam Jackson, thank you. I'll say an amen to that. <laughs> thank you so much, Adam. If you'd like to get some of Adam's music, you can get it on his website, aj.com. That's A-E-J-A-Y-E dot -E -E com. Thank you, as always, to our wonderful musical support from Mr. Sam Krieger and Karen Smith. <laughs> So, uh, donations over the phone can be made uh, by calling into the church, 818-762-7566. We'll be here for about 30 minutes after the service to take your donations over the phone by credit or debit card. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, do them via our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. That takes you straight to the page where you can make a one-time or a recurring, set up recurring donations. And you can also text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And we know some of you prefer to still mail in your checks. We're absolutely joyful to receive any, any of your donations, however you're giving them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. Please know that you can get prayer with a practitioner after service on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website and uh, connect with us on Zoom, and we can put you in a private breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. You can still pray, uh, send your prayer requests to our email address, prayer at nhcrs.org, or call into the office, and option number four allows you to leave a voicemail message with uh, whatever prayer request you may have. And we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send those out to our practitioners so you'll be well supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service, the meditation starts at 6.50, service is at 7, same links on Facebook Live and Zoom. And my topic this week will be beneath the surface. And you get to find out all the things I learned from Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> Quick start class with Dr. Mark. That's starting today, April 18th. And it'll go for three weeks. Uh, so it'll be this Sunday, next Sunday, and May 2nd at 11.15 to 12.45 via Zoom. So it'll be on the same link that you're on right now. Those of you who are with us on Zoom will wrap up the service and then start taking people in for the class. Uh, if you didn't sign up yet, there is a workbook that we would have sent you a link for, but it's the same link. We'll let you in. Just join us, and we'll work out getting you a workbook to download that you can use for the class. So um, you could go and try to sign up now so you'll have everything beforehand, and we'll work with those who join us at the last minute. We just want to welcome everyone in. This is a required class to become a member of the church. It's free, and it also gives you a lot of the basics of science of mind. So if you want a refresher or you just want to learn more about our philosophy, please join. It'll be our joy to have you there with us. Well, with Dr. Mark, and I'm sure it'll be a joy for him to have you with him. <laughs> Virtual Circle of Healing via Zoom is today at 1 p.m. We invite you to join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart for this virtual healing journey and enrich your own sense of well-being. And the Zoom link is on our website. Feeding the Homeless, our Love and Kindness Ministry will be feeding the homeless today. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please go to our website to get information about that. Also, we'll be offering an exciting new class, The Creative Life, facilitated by our own very creative Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. 
It is a five-week class that begins on Tuesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. on Zoom and is based on the book, The Creative Life, Seven Keys to Your Own Inner Genius, to Your Inner Genius, and that's by Eric Butterworth. So you can sign, on, uh, sign up for that class online. The cost is $100. Our Zoom virtual patio meets before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services, so it's a great way for you to stay connected with your fellow congregants, uh, where we started up about 20 minutes before the service and then hang out afterwards. The men's group meets from 11 to 11.30 every Sunday. All men are welcome, and our uh, Zoom meditation is still going on every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. We'd love you to join us for that. And for all the information, all that's going on here, you can go to nhcrs.org, and uh, you can also sign up for our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. So again, thank you so much for being with us today. Let's join together in singing the peace song. <laughs> So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>